Hey Bulldog fans, Tristan Hobbs here along with head coach Chris Merritt. This is the Bryant Football Coaches Show. Uh, back with you here at Burns Stadium. The Bulldogs getting set for homecoming and reunion weekend as they take on the Red Flash Saturday at 1 o'clock. Uh, before we get to the Red Flash, uh, Coach, let's just talk about last Saturday uh, taking on in-state rival Brown. Came down to the last play, 35-30 uh, game uh, that Brown came away with. Uh, just your overall thoughts on, on, on what you saw on Saturday. Well, again, I think we, as a program, took another step, for the most part, in the right direction. We found ourselves leading in the fourth quarter. Uh, we just we have to find a way to win in the fourth quarter now. I mean, that's it, it's at the point where baby steps are enough. We need to we need to start taking some strides. Going back through the film, talking to your coaches, uh, what are some of the, the takeaways? Three takeaways you took from Saturday in terms of either positive or negative. Well, Positively, it was, uh, it was good to finally start scoring some points. Uh, I think that helps our defense out quite a bit. We put together some long drives, uh, put up 500 yards in offense. I think we had 37 plus first downs, which is what we have to do. We have to control the clock. We've got to control uh, keeping our defense on the sidelines, which is the best defense. And then we were able to get the ball in the end zone. Uh, we didn't turn the ball over until the final play of the ball game. Um, so th there were some positives there. You know, Corey Curtis stepped in and made some. Uh, he injected some life into our offense. You know, he delivered some passes uh, with his arm. He kept us in it. Uh, receivers uh, had a very solid game. Three of them across the board. I think we had 300 yard uh, receivers. Um, wish we could have ran the ball a little bit better, but uh, you know, we, we take the yards, you know, whatever they gave. Uh, defensively, um, I think uh, we we controlled the what we call the, the the garbage plays, the reverses, and all the trick plays that uh, that we knew were coming our way. Uh, however, we still gave up the long run that uh, ultimately was the difference in the football game. And, and um, you know, at, at the end, uh, offensively, we had a chance to win it. Just uh, didn't get it done. You mentioned Corey, uh, his first career start, uh, throws the ball 55 times, completes 35 of them, uh, program record 394 yards. What did you like about his performance? What did you like? It was the throws, it was his command of the offense, his, his kind of comfortability in the pocket? Well, we, we, we needed somebody back there who was going to be decisive with the football. That's exactly what he is. He doesn't mince. He, he knows where he's going with the football. He delivers catchable footballs, which is what we needed to do. Uh, he sat in the pocket. He took some shots now. Um, and they started bringing some pressure and more than we could handle or we had a breakdown. Uh, he delivered some balls under duress and uh, stood in there and, and at times, even with his feet, made some big runs for us. So uh, he did exactly what he was, he was brought here to do, uh, just taking him a little bit of time to, to get the opportunity. Um, but uh, he stepped in and did it very well. How do you think a performance like this affects a, a player like of, of his? You talked about decisiveness and to have a good, good game like that in his first start. How do you think that kind of will help him build towards this week? Well, I, I think it, it, for his confidence, I think it goes a long way. Uh, our biggest thing with our offense is we can't turn the football over. We cannot give the other team more possessions than they're already going to get naturally anyway. So that was big for him. He took what they gave, which was important. And as long as he stays on that track, I think he'll be successful in this conference especially, um, as long as he continues to take what the defense gives. And we don't force things. You know, if, if when, when Corey gets himself into trouble, it's when he tries to force things and see things that aren't there. But uh, Saturday, he did a very good job of, of staying within the framework of the offense, delivering catchable footballs, and the receivers responded as well. You talk about catchable footballs, the receivers uh, did an outstanding job in terms of some tough throws and uh, even the, the routine throws that they, they were able to catch. We talked about it a couple weeks ago that that was a problem for your receiving core. It was great to see that on Saturday they make some big plays downfield for you guys. Yeah. it. Uh, Again, we felt going into the ball game that we had the opportunity to pass the football on these guys. Uh, it was whether or not when they brought pressure of West being able to stay in the pocket and deliver catchable footballs. And, and that's exactly what happened. Corey delivered some pretty accurate catchable balls. Guys ran some good routes, and, and they consistently caught the ball. We had a couple drops. Um, but we had 55 pass attempts, and I haven't called 55 passes in most 7-on-7 seven -seven competitions, let alone a football game, and, and I'm sure Corey's arm was tired afterwards, but that's how we needed to move the football Saturday. Uh, Anthony Frederick, we've talked about his abilities, uh, seven catches, 119 yards, uh, but Hunter Hill, a guy that came from Memphis, uh, only had four catches total through the first three games of the year, had eight and a pair of touchdowns on Saturday. What did you see from him? Well, 
Hunter's moved around for us. He's he's a stopgap filler for us. Uh, he's played inside. He's played outside. I think uh, early on the struggles came more from uh, ju just where he was playing in the offense. Now that's kind of changed a little bit. Um, now he's starting to get more looks at his position that he's playing right now, and and we anticipate him to continue. It's what he, what we brought him in for. You know, he gives us exactly what we need, and uh, with, with him and Vinny and. and Anthony and uh, you know just the, the whole crew of receivers that went out there, uh, you know, 55 passes, and um, it, as long as we continue to protect and give the quarterback time, he'll connect. And then last week we also talked a little bit about uh, your running back position. This week you got Alfred Dorbor and Isaac McRae back in a somewhat full-time capacity. It must have felt nice to be able to see 26 and two on the field. Yeah, it. Uh, uh, our running back position for having five young men uh, in that group has been pretty beat up this year. Um, and uh, Daniel did a great job uh, early on the season carrying the load. He took 60 carries, uh, I think, in the first three football games before he ended up uh, getting dinged up a little bit. Now, the other two guys came in and, and uh, performed very well. You know, Isaac had that uh, very solid, patient run for us at the end zone, uh, getting it in. You know, these guys have done a very good job once we get down inside the five yard line of getting the ball in the end zone I think uh, for the most part this year when you start looking at the numbers of it every time we've been in the five we've we've walked away with a touchdown so um, just getting there is the issue so and now you get set for St. Francis a team that is uh, one of the more physical teams uh, in this conference you talked about uh, in your press conference in January that you want to be the team that no one wants to play against in the Northeast Conference NEC opener against one of the toughest teams. You guys want to be uh, one of the toughest teams in this league in terms of playing against them. Uh, a good matchup this weekend. Yeah, listen, uh, St. Francis is athletic and they're strong and they're fast and, and they're going to play up in our face and we know that. So I think that uh, defensively, if we give our defense a long field to defend, we have a, a great opportunity to come away with one. Uh, glad we're playing at home, glad it's homecoming, uh, excited for the atmosphere. Um, and, and just excited to get back at it uh, on to the next. And you see opener as well. This is when it kind of uh, now not starts to matter, but now it's you're playing for a league title right now. That has to be sure. exciting. Yeah, we, we knew first four games we could be 0-4, 4-0. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's these next eight that count um, for what for our goals are for the program. And we want to set the tone, and, and St. Francis is a great first challenge test for us in the NEC. You mentioned homecoming, your first taste of it here at Bryant, uh, all the excitement that comes around with that. How excited are you kind of to have the alums back on campus to, and, and to get that feeling of, of what this program has kind of been for the last 21 years? Well, listen, it's this is what we, we do it for, Saturday afternoons. And it's homecoming. It doesn't get any bigger than that uh, in front of our home crowd, uh, in front of all the people that are going to come back that, that love this university. And uh, you know our guys are eager to go out and perform. You know they're listen they're they're stuck up on 0 and 4 right now, and it doesn't feel very well. But I'm gonna tell you, it, it does not it does not dampen their spirits. Uh, they want to come back and they want to fight. They want to get better week to week. That's what I love about this group of young men. Head coach Chris Merritt, the Bulldogs, going to set to take on St. Francis this Saturday, homecoming and reunion weekend kickoff at one o'clock. Be sure to follow the Bulldogs on social media at Bryant U Football.